G'day, welcome back to another episode of Extractions and Iron. And today we're talking about magnet. Today's project is to take some hard drive magnets, some neodymium iron boron magnet, and extract the exciting element in there, which is the neodymium. This project comes from a really classic science madness thread from a couple of years ago. So full credit to, I mean, mostly Mr. Home Scientist. As is typical of a science madness thread, there's 25 pages of uh, discussion about this project. Pretty much the synthesis we're doing today gets covered in the first one or two pages. <laughs> Just want to make neodymium sulfate, but we want reasonably pure neodymium sulfate. The other 23 pages of the 25 uh, pages of, of science managed threads are all about discussing how to go from neodymium salt to pure neodymium metal, which is quite hard, even despite 23 pages of discussions about it, no one's been able to reliably do that. So what's neodymium? Why is it exciting? It's used more and more in the modern world. It's one of these rare earth elements. So the chemistry isn't super exciting. It just likes to form a plus three ion, but the physics of neodymium are, are much more exciting. And, and that's the case for a lot of the rare earths. One of the most popular laser types is an ND YAG laser, so that uses neodymium ions to, to make 1064 nanometer light. Magnets are such a huge industry, so neodymium is one of the most profitable rare earths to mine. Generally, in rare earth mine, you, you just mine all of them and they're just going to be at, a, at, a, at some sort of distribution. Generally, not too much deviated from the crustal average. Pretty much all neodymium still now comes from a huge mega mine in China. The mine has a pretty good grade but um, the sheer scale of the deposit is really what uh, makes it work. Actually, we, the thing that makes it work is that it's in China. Mining and separating the rare earths is so energy intensive that if this mine was tried to be run in Australia, you couldn't do that because the energy cost is just too expensive. But because it's China, they don't really have to make a profit off the electricity being sold. So they can just mine as much rare earths as they want. So they have a global supply of the rare earths. So then they can set the prices. So they become the world's leading magnet manufacturer so it really works out quite well for them much to the annoyance of virtually every other country's government but that's what you get for having a smidgen of strategic vision about 15 to 20 years ago <laughs> it wasn't that hard to predict i mean having a huge deposit certainly helps but still Okay, I'm getting a little off topic here. A neodymium is used to make good permanent magnets, but why hard drive magnets? Why are we extracting them from hard drive magnets? Well, I first started this project over a year ago uh, because I was trying to write a paper or something and I was spending a lot of time on a computer and I thought, wouldn't it be great for my mental health if I destroyed a computer? And I've got to say, I fully recommend breaking a computer. So <laughs> even though the computers might control our lives, every so often we can dissolve a couple in acid and feel better about things. We're just going to dissolve the magnets in acid. Everything should go into solution, not the boron. The boron should just stay there. But how do we separate the iron and the neodymium? Interestingly, the neodymium has reverse solubility. I think that's the term. It might be retrograde solubility. It doesn't really have a term because it doesn't really come up very often. The neodymium is more soluble in the cold water and will crystallize out in hot solution. How is this even a thing? I'm not terribly sure, but it allows us to um, manipulate this to uh, separate it from the iron because the iron sulfate, like nearly every other chemical in the world, is less soluble in cold solution and more soluble in hot solution. Like that's just how you would think everything is. But neodymium is, has reverse solubility. So <laughs> that's all the context I wanted to mention. Oh, except um, <laughs> why would I have started the project a year and a bit ago and I'm finishing it now um, it was the stupidest of reasons. I got these hard drives and then um, I couldn't get the screws okay. off to get the magnets out. What is that? Because I'm I'm incompetent, right? Um, so I bought like torque screw um, screwdriver or whatever torque thing, and then I I still couldn't get the screws off. Hey. Ugh. So those hard drives, little pile of hard drives sat there for, for a little while. Um, and then recently I was thinking about it and I was like, why am I trying to undo the screws? I don't have to put these hard drives back together again. <laughs> like, it's This is bolt cutter territory for sure. Like I should have just got a hand saw or a fucking Dremel. Yeah, a bit of a shift of approach, um, but uh, much more successful. So um, that's, that's where we pick up this project again after I've uh, successfully just fucked up these hard drives and um, I just hit one with a hammer as well uh, once again this is just deeply personal um, 
<laughs> I wouldn't recommend hitting a computer with a hammer every so often. Um, it, it was good. Anyway, <laughs> but this is where we begin. We actually have some magnets here from some hard drives. So this is where we pick it up. All right. And for all my hard work, I'm left with uh, a little pile of hard drive magnets from the hard drives. Um, it's not very much neodymium to extract in that. So um, I just went on to eBay and I got this pile of hard drive magnets from someone with an entrepreneurial spirit and the ability to actually use a torque screw wrench properly. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, 27, I think was on the eBay listing. Um, I think this was cheaper than me buying the screwdriver set. So anyway, um, point being, um, the magnets aren't these big brackets, these, you know, these big brackets aren't the whole magnet. The magnet is this bit here. In fact, if we grab some of my crappy ones, you can see with this one, the, mag the magnets are broken off the frame, the bracket. Um, so what we're really after is this bit. So this bit's the magnet, and this bit is just the metal frame. That's not magnetic at all. Or this bit is the magnet. Our next step is to pull these magnets the actual magnets, the bit we want, off the frame. So we, we could, in theory, dissolve everything up in acid right now, but we're gonna do two extra steps to try and physically remove the metals we don't want so that we um, uh, you know, aren't struggling with the purification later on because the purification works, but it's not, it's not super clean. So the cleaner we can get it now physically by removing a lot of these iron and nickel um, metal, we'll remove the nickel in the next step, but the iron is just these brackets. If we can just pull them apart and chuck them aside, then yeah, <laughs> it makes much more sense than, than dissolving them up in acid, even though this is uh, definitely a chemistry channel and we still haven't got to actually doing any chemistry yet, but um, physically separating them is, is the wisest way, provided I don't get sunburned. All right, I'm hopeful that I can just get this. Oh, now I could demagnetize them right now, but I'll do that in a later step. This, and maybe I'll get annoyed by this. This. And then I can get it like here, and then just sort of bend it. Whoa, sort of. My strength is not really one of my fucking strengths. Ah, oh, yeah, and then that comes off like that. They're not held on very hard. There's just a bit of glue and obviously the magnetism. That's a steel bracket. That's what we want. And that's trash. Now time to do it again. A lot. Just had a brainwave I think if these magnets are held to the bracket with just a little bit of glue and the magnetism if we hit them with a torch it'll demagnetize the magnet and melt the glue so maybe the magnets will just fall off there you go melt the table a little perfect That's fucking ridiculously stupid but Good as new. Time to cook up a delicious batch of magnet soup. All right, I think it's done. I think my soup's ready. Now I can't feel any magnetism in there. I'll let it cool down and hopefully all the glues like run away it should make my life a lot easier now now we've let it cook you know and after cooking we're left with a small pile of magnets well i mean x magnets magnets that have been cooked above their curie temperature so the alignment of the magnetic fields of the ions have all been scrambled we've killed them um, and it takes a very expensive machine to uh, make these back into magnets again and also i've got an even smaller pile of actual magnets and these are the ones i got off um, the hard drives before i thought about cooking them you can see they're all beaten up <laughs> but still actually magnets look uh, there's a lot of scrap already you know from our big pile of magnets a lot of it was but in the bracket, but uh, uh, these are actually still nickel coated. Let's see if I can find a good example of one. Yeah, you see here, once they've been demagnetized, you can pull off this foil off the side. So we want to try and physically remove quite a bit of this foil. 
because this foil is going to dissolve into the acid and then we're going to be the solution is going to be absolutely chocked full of bloody nickel ions which um, we're going to have to contend with i'm obviously not going to be able to physically remove all of it because it's just a little bit finicky but see what i can do to kind of peel it off so it's a bit of a downside to having lots of small magnets rather than just having one big magnet, huge fucking monster magnet or something, because then it's all just the, the magnet inside and surrounded by nickel foil, whereas these are all tiny bits of magnet, which are all individually foiled. So, all right, get, the, get my pliers out and get back to it. Uh, I think that was kind of a waste of time. I managed to get some nickel off, which I suppose will be helpful, but it's just not very easy. Whoa. You can see the actual color of the magnets uh, on a lot of the samples. You can see the sort of ceramic material underneath a very thin metal coating, which I think is just there for corrosion resistance and, and, and I guess durability. But yeah, the metal doesn't want to come off this fucking magnets. I'm trying to peel it off and it just like little bits peel off at a time. Um, so yeah, everything's just going to dissolve in the acid really, uh, so I'll set that up. Yeah, we'll put it in some, not this container obviously, because this uh, metal fry pan will also dissolve in the acid, so put it in an actual beaker, pretend we're doing actual chemistry, put this nickel foil aside, uh, we don't need that, just be using some dilute sulfuric acid, so let's get that set up. All right, so it's 83 grams of magnets, 83 grams, uh, and it's just in some distilled water at the moment. It's not reacting with the with the water, but I have here some 50% sulfuric acid. I'll just add that in. We should see it start to react. Yep, that's um pretty vigorous. You can see the bubbling in there. See that bubbling? Hell yeah. The magnets themselves are quite uh, reactive, I think. That's why, they're, that's why they're coated so well in the nickel, to stop them sort of reacting with the air and any moisture or anything like that, just over time, you know, because they have to last for years and years. It's a couple of days later now, and our solution looks really gross. <laughs> um, this is kind of what we expect when the iron first dissolves, it forms iron 2, which is just a really light green color. But over time and understanding, the air gets in and reacts and it forms iron 3, which is less soluble and it has this really strong orange color, you know, the typical kind of rust color. That's what it's done, but it still looks like there's heaps of solid in there. We'll bring it out to the light. Yeah, it's heaps of solid. I didn't add heaps of acid in there, I'm trying not to dissolve so much nickel. And, and by not using a whole, uh, excess of acid will try and dissolve the more reactive thing first which is the the magnet i'm not sure we really achieved that very well maybe we did we'll, we'll, we'll get the magnets out x magnets you know because most of them aren't magnetic although there are a couple of magnetic ones in there which i shouldn't have done and made them all clump together but maybe that was good because it was getting a little violent and it's just been sitting in this water just for heat management because i abandoned it obviously which is not always the smartest move but rather than just letting it generate its whole heat generate its own heat until it's boiling um, just by putting in some water you know really lets it dissipate the heat quite a lot more effectively what am I saying? Let's get the stuff out. Let's just have a look at them. Um, they might just be nickel shells now, and we could have dissolved all the stuff from the insides. But uh, let's let's have a look at it in there. We might have to add more acid. two minutes now pretty drastic change in color once again and and that's because under acidic conditions you have the iron 3 can react with the iron or the, the steel or, or anything really and get reduced back to iron 2 so we lose that rust color really quickly once we've re-acidified the solution there's an iron 2 to iron 3 sort of oxidation reduction reaction and we're, and we're driving it back the other way so we should be able to chuck a lot of that iron out because we don't give a fuck about the iron in there we want the neodymium the cool thing if this was an iron extraction I could just go out there and fucking lick a bit of steel and that would be, you know, project done. This channel is not about easy projects, it's about suffering. So here we go. <laughs> that was a longer rant than it needed. What's happening now? It just It's just going to dissolve for a little bit longer. It's going to heat up um, and then we'll come back later in a couple of days time and see 
what it needs again. Back again a couple days later, it doesn't look like it's changed colour, which is a bit surprising. And that seems to be the reason for it. <laughs> Look at those crystals. At some point, we're gonna dissolve so much into solution that the solution can't hold it and it'll start crystallizing out. This is what we want, because the stuff crystallizing out, that looks really lovely, is the iron, iron sulfate. Because neodymium sulfate in cold solution is, is quite um, soluble. This is the stuff we don't want in the nice crystals, which is always the way. But uh, yeah, it's, the magnets are no longer dissolving. X magnets are no longer dissolving, so we're gonna to have to rescue them out of there. Uh, but we wanna get rid of the crystals, really. Well, put them aside. So we're gonna separate the solution, X magnets, and the crystals all into different containers. And we can start processing the solution with our neodymium in it. Um, it's still gonna be chocked full of iron. Uh, the rest of the magnets, X magnets, can can go keep dissolving. I guess I've gotta add more acid and, and um, get them re-dissolving again. All right, I did say the crystals will just be the iron sulfate, but actually looking at these lovely crystals, you definitely see two colors. You see the iron sulfate in the green, uh, and then we've really got these pink crystals coming out. It really does look like some neodymium has crystallized out. I don't even know if there's any bloody X magnet left in there. There could be XX magnet. What are we looking at? Oh yeah, a lump of metal in there. up a bit just to uh, get things reacting again uh, in the new acid. Uh, I've got this bloody iron sulfate to the side and we've got our pink neodymium solution that still probably has heaps of iron and nickel in it. We'll do with that later but um, yeah there's still magnets in it. Look there's no stir bar in it. It's doing its own stirring. Beautiful. So now, I don't know why I didn't mag demagnetize all the magnets. Not doing that made all the magnets clump together and then all the crystals formed around it which stopped it reacting. I knew that was gonna happen. It's such an obvious thing. I demagnetized most of them, but not all of them. Just because they're not magnetized doesn't mean they're not magnetic. But we also wanna boil this down. We wanna boil this down. So once the hot plate is free, we can start boiling this down. We wanna just boil it down until we start to see crystals form even when it's hot, and then we'll cool it down because the crystals forming when it's hot and the neodymium sulfate, once we cool it down, um, then the iron will crystallize out. So we'll kind of use the, the different crystallizing temperatures to, to do that. We want to be at a point where it's kind of saturated with neodymium. Pink solution, you can see. Ah, oh, it's doing the thing. It's fucking doing the thing. Look, under this light, look what color it is. If I bring it over here, look what color it is in the fucking sunlight. I'll get this fucking door open. See it? It changes color depending on it's under that thing or that thing. I'm okay. So I just violently kicked the door down for no particular reason. Yeah, sorry, I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> no, hasn't been a creature for a little while. Um, unfortunately, or probably fortunately. Unless you count the spiders. The possums moved out, it's probably, the, probably for the best. No bats, no lizards recently either, and no snakes. So it's been pretty good. Had a rat the other day, but no, um, no, no, um, things eating the rats, so that's a start. So yeah, the neodymium absorbs the, uh, the light really well from the fluorescent bulbs, um, because the fluorescent bulbs aren't a nice continuous spectrum, they've got all these peaks, and those peaks are, you know, from the rare earths in the light bulbs, so they correspond with the, with the transitions in the solution, which are, which are very narrow, so you kind of get this weird optical effect where, um, it's a different color under that light bulb, than it is under the global light bulb, which is the sun, which is a continuous spectrum. <laughs> it's a very cool, very cool effect. I wasn't expecting to see it this, this early on, but there we go. There we go. Look, we've got neodymium in solution. That's, that's fantastic.
Oh, I'm interrupting my own video uh, to, to, to mention the shirts. Look, it's embroidered. It's good. You can still get the Cubane shirt. It says Cubane 2023. Hell yeah, I'm my own sponsor. So that's it. Um, <laughs> back to the video. All right, uh, this has been boiling down for a little bit now. Um, and if we turn off the stirring, we can see some crystals starting to form in the hot solution. So that's probably the neodymium sulfate. A lot of crap in solution where we're gonna let this cool, the neodymium will redissolve, and then the iron will precipitate out and then we'll run it through a filter to get rid of a bit of the other shit in solution too. A bit of scunge in there, you know, classic. It's a very dense solution, it feels it feels hefty. <laughs> um, that's what chemistry is, heating things up and then cooling them down to heat them up again. This is the joy of science. <laughs>thought something cool would crystallize out there um i set up the time lapse and everything crystals never grow when you want them to <laughs> but i suppose that's uh means uh iron to neodymium ratio for this solution is is very good you know we, we push it towards neodymium so there's a lot of neodymium in solution and not a whole lot of iron so the stuff that's crystallizing out now probably is neodymium you know probably not in great purity but um we've still got a whole lot of neodymium to go in in terms of our magnets are still X magnets are still dissolving here in, in solution. Jar of magnet soup. This one's been uh, in the freezer trying to cool down so I can crystallize out some iron uh, and, and give that a filter. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just filter off some of this shit and start combining solutions. We've got a lot of acid still in solution and a lot of magnets are still dissolved. So yeah, there's probably a nice way I can put the acid back into the magnets just to keep concentrating uh, the neodymium and, and throwing away the iron, you know, in the big pile of iron sulfate crystals. Oh, we're down to 37 grams of, of X magnet now, and uh, that's probably mostly shells. Still seems reasonably reactive, so we'll keep putting it um, in the acid. This solution, it's got a lot of neodymium in it, and we're just sort of increasing the concentration of neodymium, so we'll just keep it going. Another day of dissolving. Okay, I need to have some sugar or something. God damn. And yet again, another couple of days later, we're back. Everything looks like it's dissolved. Well, no, actually, there's still a big lump of metal in there somewhere. Um, but it, it looks like there's excess acid and it's not really bubbling too much anymore. So it looks like we've extracted all the X magnets out, basically. Uh, it, it spent the last couple of hours in the freezer, you know, the last couple of days at room temperature and the last couple of um, hours at, in the freezer just to crystallize out as much iron sulfate as possible, which it looks like we've done. It's got a lot of sulfuric acid in it, so it doesn't freeze even though it's very cold. Yeah, there's a big lump of crystals in there. Uh, which I can't see, but we'll, we'll filter off. We're gonna filter all the boron, all the crystals, any crystals out, any bits of metal left, filter them all out, and we're left with a nice solution, ideally. So let's just do that while it's nice and cold and not waste any time. Oh, where's some power? Clogged it somehow. How did I clog it? All right, attempt two. All right. All right. And here's our solution that's depleted in iron. Still would have a bit of iron in it, but um, it's a lot of neodymium because we really haven't lost too much neodymium. We've got all the neodymium that we've dissolved. Still in solution. So we heat it up, start to boil off some water, and we should start to see the neodymium crystallize out while it's hot. And we've still got quite a bit of solution, so we can remove quite a bit of water. The hot solution should still keep all the iron dissolved. No one does reverse sol solubility stuff. It just doesn't exist. I don't know. <laughs> so we're kind of making it up as we go. But I assume I'll just boil off maybe even half the solution um, and then just collect all the crystals while it's hot. All right, no water has evaporated off yet. Um, and it's just been filtered. I mean, it's just been filtered and you can already see Look how cloudy it is. Look at all the, this stuff precipitating out just because it's warm now. It's so weird. So weird. Oh well.
set as hard as a fucking rock. I have to fucking chisel that out. And here are our two fractions. So we uh, boiled it down, got some crystals out, and then took the solution, uh, boiled it down again, and got another set of crystals out. We still have some solution, which has crystallized some stuff out again, which is probably more neodymium sulfate, but I, I think we're starting to get a little bit more impure. I'm happy with these two fractions. Now, something that's very clear about these two different fractions is they are different colors. And it would be very easy to put this down to the fact that maybe they're different hydrates, or uh, maybe have different amount of iron contamination in them but I think there's something more interesting going on and um, that's generally what's speculated on the science manager's thread in fact uh, Mr. Home scientist got maybe five different colors five or six different colors out of um, you know one batch of neodymium doing different crystallization fractions and and you can see some of this old this is the iron sulfate stuff We've got our magnets in there x magnets mostly just shells in there some of the neodymium sulfate in there is, is, is really quite pink sort of different color to this than to this as well. There's some really quite strikingly green um, stuff, which I believe is nickel sulfate around here. You can see that kind of nickel. It doesn't seem to be a lot of nickel. Just near the end, it started to sort of come out. What is speculated on the science matter thread is that um, there's different contamination of different rare earths. The magnets don't use, you know, super high purity neodymium just because they don't need it generally. And because all those, those rare earths are so chemically similar, it's very hard to purify them. There's likely contamination of, of things like praseodymium, holmium in the neodymium, which goes into the magnets, which is why we're seeing slightly different colors come out of solution. How can we tell? Uh, they're probably very low levels. I want to send some of these off for some analysis. We can see the elemental composition and just have a sense of if there's any difference in um, the rare earth contamination between the two and that is the answer to why you kind of get these different colors out. A couple of days delay um, always seems to be delays when I do projects um, and I know that I haven't been in the lab enough recently because I was just bragging about the fact that there was no creatures in the lab and have a look at who is set up here. Gosh, oh, she's just gone. She doesn't really like me being here, obviously, as you might expect, but she's nursing a couple of eggs. It's a blackbird. It's not super territorial. There's some really territorial birds around, um, but um, the blackbirds, I think they're blackbirds, they aren't really one of them. That's nice. I'm not getting fucking swooped. <laughs> I mean, because there's several birds here that would try and kill me if I came this close, but the blackbird just seems mildly annoyed. It's probably the worst, worst thing for a bird to set up a nest and then hear someone vlogging. You'd be, you'd be pretty mad. Anyway, I wonder if, it, I wonder if I can uh, get the X-ray analysis done before those eggs hatch. Let's see. What, what do we reckon? My water supply. It's getting bird shit all over it. No, that's not it. Oh, I think I just heard her come back. I think it's a her, assuming they stick to the gender roles that I think they do. Hello? I'm sorry I'm here. I really am. What? <laughs> yeah, she'll be back. She hates me though. Definitely hates me. All right, so I've got the analysis back. Thank you so much to the uh, Queensland University of Technology X-ray Lab for running this uh, XRF analysis for me. I don't know what it is about QUT that just seems super helpful. So thanks again to people from QUT. I'm also very excited about this bird. I haven't checked out um, the bird in a little bit. So we'll get to see what she's up to. So first of all, we've got two samples. We've got the uh, the purple sample, which was uh, the crystallization one and, and the, the pink sample. And there is some difference in the rare earth quantities. Before I said that, uh, this is probably just due to impure neodymium going to the magnets, but looking it up, praseodymium and dysprosium are added intentionally. It makes the magnet better. Um, a lot of the magnets have up to 5% uh, praseodymium in them. Um, 
So we see that come out in, in the first fraction. So, so that maybe that could be responsible for the color change. We see some difference in the transition metals as well. We see actually some cobalt come through. I wasn't expecting some cobalt, but looking that up, that's a common magnet additive as well. There's not very much nickel, so as, as we expected, we didn't dissolve very much nickel from the shells, so that's very good to, to see that come through. So maybe the cobalt is, is making the color difference, but um, it's probably still the presidium looking at this data. Oh, I have got to turn this water pump on. That is a completely different project. No idea if it's working. <laughs> Don't ask. Oh, this must have just left. She was here. Hello? You know, she has to sit on these for 14 days. Imagine how long 14 days is to a bird. Making me feel better about my projects and how long they take. Like, this is a long project for a bird. Wherever you are, bird, keep working on that project. It'll, it'll get there. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's very hard to say whether the, the differences in praseodymium levels between these two samples or even the cobalt or nickel levels between these two samples are responsible for the colour because um, measuring the iron levels in this as well, um, there's a lot of iron in uh, especially the second fraction, which is what we'd expect. Uh, it's, that's close to 30% and that's too much. <laughs> And this one being like 14 to 15 percent is 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 not much better uh, <laughs> so really what, what i should do is i should combine them together and do another recrystallization to ensure we have good purity neodymium sulfate at the end so i'm not releasing a video where <laughs> it's um still got significant iron contamination but we've done a good job i suppose in concentrating the neodymium because the amount of neodymium like by mass in a magnet is only like 30% or so, 30, can't remember, I calculated it, can't remember, it'll be on screen. And now this sample has over 60% neodymium sulfate in the neodymium sulfate, so, um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, it's still, I guess, yet to be definitively proven if the color differences of all the fractions are due to different levels of praseodymium, or it's just how much iron is in uh, the contaminated <laughs> neodymium. So we're gonna be running another sort of reverse recrystallization where we dissolve it all in the cold and then heat it up to crystallize out the, uh, the crystals. I don't think the solubility curve is like sharp enough to allow us a really good recrystallization without heaps of losses. So I might just dissolve it all up and then boil the stuff down. Um, the solution down so we make sure everything's dissolved and then then we start crystallizing stuff out again take a bit longer but we'll get more product out of it yeah that's what we've got to do another one another step that's all right if the bird can fucking sit on its eggs for 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 two weeks then i can i can spend another day on, on the magnet project we can do it Thank you.